on that note, let me go back to how I was linking with this with uh, the next point uh, 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 in terms of uh, the effective keys, 10 keys. And uh, this is then about uh, how do you bring this all together to produce results? Uh, and one key aspect of producing results is the focus uh, that needs to be brought on accountability. How do we create that culture of accountability? And and you mentioned about two two specific um, frameworks or tools, if I were to say. One is OKR, and second is CFR. So uh, want to get started with um, uh, with A. Uh, how would you define a culture of accountability? And B, what is meant by OKR? What is it? And what is a CFR? <clears throat> well, uh, when we talk about accountability, uh, what is accountability? Uh, and, and, and how do we create accountability? Of course, traditional uh, accountability has been brought down top down by uh, me giving you a certain target, uh, often only an operation to, to execute, and I'm watching over your shoulder in a uh, micromanaging uh, uh, approach to see if you're doing things uh, the way I want it, and, uh, and if you do it right, otherwise I'm coming down on you. So, uh, but that is certainly a, a, a way that is not sustainable. Uh, it's very stressful for all parties. Um, and and when you when you look at that, uh, if we create the count as an, if we create an environment of accountability, that begins to take place when people take responsibility. See, responsibility, you, the reality is you cannot assign a responsibility. If I am the, 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 the manager or the business owner or the department uh, uh, head, I cannot assign responsibility because I'm going to be ultimately responsible for what happens in my department. I can't, well, I could, but I, uh, reasonably, I can't go to my boss and say, well, you know, John and Mary, they, they really messed up. It wasn't really my fault. You can't do that as a leader, or at least not if, you're, if, you, if you are a real leader. So it is your responsibility, and you cannot assign responsibility, but you can hold people accountable. You can agree on on tasks, targets, whatever you want to agree on, and then hold them accountable. And and <clears throat> uh, the, the thing with responsibility, responsibility can only be taken. I can I can take responsibility for something, but I cannot be assigned responsibility. And. And um, uh, the accountability con uh, context is that there are different ways to go about that, but uh, the, the, the real effective, sustainable way to go about it is when you create buy-in, when you get people on board, when people understand the, the goal, the target, and when people also comprehend the context within those goals and targets are, are important, need to be achieved, uh, the timeline and everything. And when we, when we, of course, there are ways to, to get there, and, and uh, I'm, I'm not so sure we can address everything here, but it, it takes me back to uh, something that Abrolli mentioned earlier, is leading with questions. I can tell you, Raul, you need to do X, Y, C, or you need to make whatever uh, uh, revenue in your sales territory. Uh, that's uh, what we need within the context of our overall uh, uh, performance. But 
It, it, it will, you will probably go out and do whatever you can and you will come back with whatever the result and say, OK, I, I did I did the best I can do uh, according to what you told me. Or I can go out and uh, and I can discuss with you and can say, OK, Ro, this is where we need to get with the department. Uh, how can you contribute to that uh, uh, result? What is the best you can do? And let you come up with with some ideas. I can challenge them and can negotiate. But ultimately, I will try to leave it your plan, your proposition, your proposal, your strategy. And when we agree on something, then then we can lay down and have and 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 establish whatever that goal is and it's always then the next question how do we measure progress so we lay down then the gates along the way that we have to get through in order to make sure that from where we are today to where we want to go that we are getting on that path and staying on that path and there are then checkpoints along the way and check-ins that we will have Every week, every month, every quarter, whatever the sequence or the, the reasonable sequence is. And that is how you create a system of accountability. And it becomes then more sustainable because it's not what I'm telling Raul and what I'm telling John and what I'm telling Mary and what I'm telling Jim. It's what Jim and Mary and John and Raul brings back in and says, OK, this is what I'm committing to, this is what I can do. And what I will do. And then play that back and create uh, uh, the necessary uh, measuring system and uh, uh, visualization of what we measure and feedback of the measuring. These are all then the different facets to, to, to execute and make it happen. Establish a scoreboard that is accessible to those that need to access it. So that they always can see where they are. It's a little bit, uh, <clears throat> think about it that the scoreboard is so important uh, and, and clarity in what are the, the key features that we need to uh, keep in mind. Uh, and and in, in, in any goal achievement uh, uh, process, <clears throat> there, are, there, are, there are two measures. There are lagging measures and there are leading measures. Traditionally, we focused on the lagging measures, on the, on the performance, on the uh, 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 profit, uh, on, on, on sales numbers. These are all lagging uh, uh, measures looking back, uh, seeing if, if, if something has been reached. And I'm not saying they are not important. They are very important. But the leading measures are the ones that create the outcomes. And in, in, in my opinion, there is far too little effort from leadership on any level being allocated towards leading measures. If you figure out what are the best lead, leading uh, uh, parameters that will create the performance that you need, the outcome that you need, and you focus on that, the outcome will, will be a consequential result. You don't have to worry about that. You will, you will get that as a confirmation, but you don't worry about this. That's why I'm, uh, I, I tend to, I tend to challenge my clients uh, to to not focus on the performance, but focus on, on, the, on the effort that is being put towards the activities that need to be executed. The performance is an outcome. And I think, but that's a, 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 a change in mindset from a leadership perspective. And it applies to any level of the hierarchy. I don't care if it's your 
your frontline team or if it's the uh, uh, CEO. It's just the, the, the measures are different ones, but the approach, the process is the same. We need to find out the best leading uh, uh, indicators. Yeah, uh, and I think if I may insert a comment here, Manfred, uh, going back to the, the first comment that you made, which is uh, uh, asking questions. Uh, to me, this is a combination of asking better questions in order to identify what are the leading indicators, because sometimes it is not as straightforward as saying that this is the leading indicator to start measuring it. In my experience as a consultant, it's always been like my sales are declining. And I start the question, why is my sales declining? Uh, what are the different variables that contribute to my sales? Um, and I might then say, OK, let's start measuring these, these variables uh, and see uh, which of them has a bigger impact on my sales. Uh, next month, I might or might not get the answer by uh, through this approach. And I ask the next level question, OK, in each of these variables, what actually contributed to those variables going up or down? And I keep asking these questions in order to find out what is that leading indi indicator where I should be focusing my inputs on? Am I putting in the right amount of effort or inputs in the variables that are going to contribute the maximum to that end outcome, which is my sale? Uh, and that focus on the inputs and co combining that with asking the questions in the first place to arrive at the right set of variable is to me is you know what I understood from what you are describing um, as well uh, that when it comes to um, creating better accountability it starts by asking questions uh, to um, uh, to a make uh, the other person uh, jointly accountable for what I see as an end outcome but more importantly as a process to arrive at what are the leading indicators which we should be measuring and that in in essence is i think what um, what okr also does uh, absolutely defining the the shared objectives and then the key results which are in, in in a way what you were saying the stage gates or the milestones which we should be looking at but the uh, uh, but the key results also then we we look at it more from the point of view of what is going to create those results what inputs would create those results and that need to get measured and you know, I, I, it, it, you are absolutely right. It, the, the, those leading indicators are not always on the surface. They are not always clearly visible. Yeah. And I give you a, a, a simple example out of, uh, from the insurance industry. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and insurance industry has a lot of data. And if you if you become today a an insurance salesperson or a sales professional. <clears throat> You need to start learning what are the, stati the statistics behind the process. And what, what I mean by that is, uh, and, and there, I don't have all the numbers top of my head here, but they are available. And, and every organization has a little bit different set of numbers. But it, in essence, for, uh, it says in order to close one uh, uh, life insurance, let's say, uh, you need to have five uh, uh, meetings with potential uh, uh, customers in order to get five physical meetings uh, with uh, or Zoom meetings nowadays with a, uh, a potential customer, you need to uh, make uh, 10 appointments because five of them fall through. In order to make 10 appointments, you need to make uh, 30 cold, cold calls. So the reality is that in, in order to get one closed insurance uh, premium uh, or, or uh, case, you need to start with 30 cold calls. If you need in a week five closings, yep. that means you need to call 150 people. You need to make 150 cold calls. Excellent example. And because in the same week. 